An object is launched with an initial speed of v0 at an angle of alpha above the horizontal. What is the greatest height it reaches in its trajectory, and how much time does it take to get there? This kind of problem is fundamental for doing any sort of ballistic trajectory, so it's good to take a look at it. Here I'll define the plus y direction being up vertically, and the plus x direction is going to be horizontal in the direction of the motion to make the signs easier. We've got our initial velocity vector v0 and at angle alpha, the initial component in the horizontal direction in the x direction is going to be v0 cosine alpha, and the initial component in the vertical direction is going to be v0 sine alpha. Since there's no acceleration in the x direction, the component in the x direction never changes, it's just v0 cosine alpha. In the y direction it does change because there's acceleration minus g, so over time the velocity becomes v0 sine alpha minus gt. The position equations, very simple for the x direction because it's just constant velocity, initial x position plus v0 cosine alpha, that's the x velocity times time. For the y, we've got that acceleration term, so we have the minus one half gt squared in there. Now we're finding the time to the top. To do that, we're going to use the vertical equation for velocity, because what we're going to find is the time for the vertical component of velocity to go to zero because that's when it stops going up and starts coming down, and that's right at the top. So here we're saying v sub y at the top is zero. So v sub y is v0 sine alpha minus gt, solve for time. gt equals v0 sine alpha, and then divide both sides by g equals v0 sine alpha over g. Want to find the height at the top? So here h is our unknown height above the bottom, so we're going to solve for that. So here y0 is our start, zero, and we've got now plugging in the time, what we've got here, time equals v0 sine alpha over g. The first case, we've got two factors of v0 sine alpha, so that gives us v0 squared sine alpha squared. And in the second case, we're just squaring this whole thing, so we have v0 sine alpha all squared divided by g squared, so our factor of g in the numerator and g squared in the denominator. Uh, gives us just one factor of g in the denominator. Now we have two terms with v0 sine squared alpha over g, just 1 minus 1 half that, so the end result is the height reached is 1 half v0 squared sine squared alpha over g. Now let's look at a special case where we're firing straight up a vertical launch. That means that launch angle alpha equals 90 degrees. So we'll just plug that in to see how high this gets. So our h is going to be 1 half v0 sine squared alpha over g, while our sine alpha is just sine of 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees is 1, so this sine squared alpha term just becomes 1 and it goes away, and all we're left with is 1 half v0 squared over g. Now we can invert this if we want and find out what initial speed v0, if fired straight up, will get us to a height h. So we start with this equation and we're going to solve for v0. So, multiply both sides by 2g, we get v0 squared equals 2gh. Take the square root of both sides so that we can find v0 and we get the square root of 2gh. We don't have to worry about the negative solution here. Speed is a magnitude, it's just positive, so we just take the positive square root of 2gh. By the same token, square root of 2gh is the speed reached by an object that's dropped straight down from rest, a distance h.